So this is a bizarre story. A 33-year-old Amishman living in the Etheridge, Tennessee community was arrested for possession of 25 pounds of marijuana earlier this week. Lawrence County Police also seized over a dozen firearms and an unspecified amount of cash. This is a report from News 4 Nashville. According to police, Chris Appleby, 33, was arrested after police executed a search warrant in his home on Denson Road in northern Lawrence County. In addition to the 25 pounds of marijuana that was found in two separate outbuildings, police state that guns and cash were also seized. Appleby was arrested and taken to the Lawrence County Jail. He's facing a number of charges, including possession of Schedule 6 for resale. So a couple things make this story quite odd or bizarre. One, of course, is the drugs and the Amish connection. So it's not often that the Amish are involved with drugs, and in particular this, their sale. Just the amount of marijuana involved here in this case uh, suggests that he was, <laughs> and this wasn't for personal use. So I'm not saying that the Amish are immune from drugs or drug use. No, that sort of thing uh, does occur in some with some Amish, of course. I mean, the Amish are human, and that that happens. I've heard of that happening. At the same time, I'm not I'm not going to give the impression here that it's a common thing. Uh, perhaps certain communities have more of an issue with it, but it's not something that's widespread throughout Amish society by any means. However, this does recall an infamous 1998 story in which two Lancaster County Amishmen became involved in selling cocaine and methamphetamine in coordination with a motorcycle gang. This was a story that made national news. Uh, the men were caught. They were charged. They had to, you know, they served their time. The men in that case were about a decade younger than Appleby here. Now, that case led to greater oversight and emphasis on youth behavior in the Lancaster County settlement. Besides that case, I'm not aware of a, a, many other, if any, cases where Amish were involved in large-scale drug dealing. So again, not something that's common for the Amish by any means. Uh, and I think that was probably pretty obvious. You don't hear of Amish drug busts happening. So the other odd thing here is the man's name. His surname is Appleby. Appleby is not a traditional Amish surname. So this suggests he must have been a convert to the group. And uh, I reached out and found out that he, in fact, was. I was in touch with a couple of people that know him, know of him. That was also reported in, in later follow-up reports here. So joining the Amish is not common, first of all. See the video I did on that topic for more about that. Now, this the other thing that makes this unusual is that this Amish community is one of the plainest of all, the most conservative of all. This is a Swartz and Truber Amish community, so they are extremely plain. Other, you know, most other Amish consider them to be very conservative. So it's it's not the easiest group to join. And um, actually spoke with again with some people that I know. I've heard that in this community uh, there are several converts, in fact, uh, to the Amish, which is uh, again fairly unusual for this type of a community. But um, apparently, Chris Appleby was one of them. I spoke with an Amish person who knows Chris or knows has known of Chris for some time, and uh, he said that he was very shocked by this event, which is kind of what you would expect. He did not live in the same community as Appleby, but had been hearing of him for a number of years. Having known his reputation, he was very shocked by this story. So it's a pretty puzzling story. It leaves a number of questions. So in a follow-up story at WKRN, it was reported that Appleby was growing and drying the marijuana in a fully functional greenhouse. To be honest with you, my partners and I were mind-boggled by how it was right there, said Detective Jason Jantke. You never hear anything bad come out of the Amish per se. There's bad apples in every crowd, but never thought it would be this big, especially with this amount of marijuana. Jantke further said that from talking to him, he said he moved down here seven years ago and joined the Amish community. He just wanted to kind of slow down and live the slow life of the Amish community. So I found that part interesting in that, you know, it was unusual that he uh, you know, joined such a conservative group. You, you kind of wonder, was there drug activity going on before he joined the Amish? Um, was there in any way 
a motivation to join the Amish as a sort of a cover for the drug operation. Now, that would be kind of a bizarre way to go, but in some ways you might think of that as the not perfect cover, but pretty good cover <laughs> because we don't, we don't think of the Amish as drug dealers, right? On the other hand, it was also suggested it was right out there in the open. So it's not like it sounds like he was trying especially hard to hide this operation unless it was, you know, the idea of hiding it in plain sight. It was also said that Amish in the community had made complaints to the authorities about Appleby. And Janke said that I can't go into what the complaints were, but it was enough for us to look into it. And that led them to be able to get a search warrant and then find the marijuana. So the way that's worded, it's a little unsure if the complaints were actually about the drugs themselves or something else. As he says, I can't get into what the complaints were. So apparently he had a shed which had equipment that helped to dry the marijuana and enable it to be processed and store it. And he stored the marijuana in, quote, a lot of mason jars. So he's been arrested and is being held in jail. This has been a national or international story. <laughs> so, again, not something you'd expect to see among the Amish. This may be one of the reasons that some Amish are hesitant about converts. Uh, I'm not trying to put this on him as a convert, but it is a fact of the case. I'm assuming that the Amish in that community are probably troubled by this. I don't know if any Amish there knew about it. I would think overall they would be in some ways glad that this was found out so that this kind of activity is not happening in their community. So I guess we'll see where the story goes from here. So I make two videos per week. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button so you can stay in the loop for those. My name is Eric Wester. I run the Amish America website. I'm not Amish, but I have visited many Amish homes and communities since 2004. I wrote my first book on Amish business success back in 2010. Thanks. Talk to you later.